These are the four easiest and most potent AI tools that I actually use in my day-to-day -day edits. We're going to take this boring A-roll static shot, cut out this breath as no one has time for those anymore, and then we are going to go ahead, click on the first part of our clip and zoom in by about 1.3, and then we will go on to our first AI tool, which is to reframe. This is going to automatically turn our very static boring shot into a dynamic one where it matches my motion. I have a devil and an angel on my shoulder. The angel wants to travel as light. Then what we're going to do is jump across to the second half of our clip. I want to change this very slightly so that it matches kind of the style that we've been doing, but just changes the tempo a little bit to help keep the flow of our edit. I'm going to copy over the stats of the previous video so that we end up in the same place that we left off in on the previous clip. And now you can see that as we cross that, there is no jump in our frame. And then I'm going to add a keyframe, find where the end of our video clip is, get rid of what's left on the end that I don't need and make another keyframe. I'm going to zoom in very slightly and pull across very slightly. This just changes the pace of our video. The devil wants all the gear. We can now compound these clips together, which enables us to use the second AI tool on them as if it was a single clip. This is Magic Mask, but we're not gonna use it as it's intended. First, we are going to unlink our clips so that we can click on intro, press option, and drag up a new copy of the clip that we just made, holding down shift so that it doesn't move around left to right. Going to approximately the middle of our clip, we can then make sure that that new layer is selected, go over to our color tab, then make sure you're on magic mask, switch quality over to better, and scribble a nice little line over your person or yourself or your subject, whoever it is, and press track forwards and backwards. This used to be called a process called rotoscoping. It took a horrendous amount of time and meant that you needed to use green screens and all sorts, but now it is super quick. However, I'm not going to make you wait for the 30 seconds that are left. Now what we can do is head up to our node area, go over to add alpha output, and then connect the alpha data from our node to our output. This is great because when we head back to our edit tab, if I were to turn off this layer, you can see that I am fully cut out of the background, which means that we have myself as a layer in front of the background, which means that anything that we place in between myself and the background can be played with with those different layers, which is super fun. Here's a timeline that I fleshed out with that very process. I have a devil and an angel on my shoulder. The angel wants to travel as lightweight as possible, be as free as possible. The devil the devil wants all the gear. The goal is to push my travel setup to its limit as we travel across Europe. Palma de Mallorca is a great place to start. Right With our video looking great, let's jump on to the audio AI that I love using. Head over to your audio track where you are keeping all your vocals, click on it, drop down to voice isolation, turn it on, have it somewhere between 10 and 50 depending on how much background noise is in your video, then drop down to dialogue leveler and optimize for moderate levels. What these two things are going to do is make sure that all your audio is really clean with all the background noise reduced and it's going to mean that even if you're talking at different levels, if you have clips at different levels throughout your tracks, you're cutting everything up from different cameras at different times, it's going to balance everything out and get your vocals nice and level the whole way through your edit. A quick tip is that if you play this back now, watch your audio one channel mixer here, which is for your audio one channel mixer here, and you want to aim for your peaks to be hitting just above negative five but not dropping below negative 10. So this track can be brought up a little bit in order to achieve that so that our volume comes out lovely on YouTube. If you find that this makes your edit a little bit laggy then you can turn both these off whilst you edit just remembering to turn them back on before the render. If you have any questions, recommendations or found this helpful please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. If you'd like a walkthrough of my entire editing process and access to my team that can plug directly into your workflow check out Creative Shortcut. See you soon.